Hello, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Grammarly in Microsoft Windows. Before we start the demonstration, a quick word about free versus premium. I'm not going to spend a long time on this because I'm not here to sell you Grammarly Premium. That's not the purpose of this video. Honestly, unless you write for a living, maybe you're a creative writer or you write policy, or perhaps you're just a student who writes essays, if you're not one of those people, you don't need to pay for Grammarly. The free version is more than sufficient for your needs. And Grammarly is quite honest and upfront about that. If you're a casual writer who mainly writes emails and the odd letter, you'll love the free version of Grammarly and you don't need premium, so you can save your money for something else. Okay, with that out of the way, on with the demonstration. As a free or premium subscriber to Grammarly on a Windows PC, you can use Grammarly as a standalone app or as an extension in an internet browser such as Firefox or Chrome, or you can use it as a plugin for Microsoft Word and Outlook. The standalone app is great for writing longer form documents such as letters and essays. The browser extension has exactly the same functionality as the standalone app, but by virtue of being a browser, you can use Grammarly on sites such as Facebook, YouTube, Gmail, and Google Docs. To start using the Grammarly extension, you can simply go to grammarly.com. Grammarly will recognize the browser that you're using and provide a link to install the extension. If you're not provided that link, simply click on the ellipsis in the top right corner of your browser, open the extensions window, and you can search for and install Grammarly that way. If you would prefer not to install the browser extension and just use Grammarly as a standalone app, you can go to grammarly.com forward slash native and download the standalone app from there. Strangely, the standalone app is not available on the Microsoft Store. Once you've installed the extension or the standalone app, you'll be asked to sign up, or if you already have an account, you can sign in. You can sign up using your Google, Facebook, or Apple account, or alternatively, you can simply use an email address. Here I am signing in as Wilson, and once I've entered my details, we're asked three questions regarding how we intend to use the app, which I imagine is purely for Grammarly's own research and marketing purposes. Having signed in for the first time, Grammarly will open a demonstration document in the document editor, which highlights all the features of the application, and you get the option to take a tour of the interface. As a free user, Grammarly will correct spelling and punctuation, which it underlines in red. And it also offers advice on clarity, which you will see underlined in blue. Additional features such as improving the delivery and engagement of your text are in green and purple, but they are only available to premium subscribers. To fix up each of your errors, simply click on the words that are underlined in red or blue, or you can access Grammarly suggestions by clicking the right hand menu. Apart from checking for errors, also on the right of the editor are a number of other options. You can hide the assistant altogether, which will allow you to type without the distraction of those lines and pop-up prompts. Grammarly also gives, you, gives your text a score based on its readability. The higher the score, the easier it is to read your text. And in that window, you'll also see your word count. Just below your score, you have the option to set goals for your text. So you can tell Grammarly about the purpose of your document. For example, how you wish your text to come across and Grammarly will help you achieve those desired intentions. At the bottom of the page is the ability to check for plagiarism and to get feedback from a professional Grammarly editor. However, both of these are premium features. Across the bottom of the screen are standard formatting features you'll see in all good editors, which allows you to set things like bold, italics, bullet points, and that kind of thing. In the top left corner of the editor is the Grammarly menu. And from here, you can access your My Grammarly homepage, and you have options to print, download, and upload documents to and from Grammarly. 
You can only download Grammarly documents in a docx format. However, you can upload in a variety of formats, including docx and RTF. Also in this menu, you can change your language preferences depending on the version of English you type in, and you also have the option to change some of the editor settings. For example, you can tell Grammarly to ignore text that is in quotes, and you can have Grammarly jump from one error to the next rather than having to manually scroll through your text. In the menu, you'll also see options to cut, paste, copy, undo, and redo, but I recommend just using the common keyboard shortcuts for this purpose because it's a lot quicker. And also Grammarly doesn't provide that right mouse context menu, which is a bit of a shame. Lastly, on the menu, you can get to your Grammarly account page by clicking on subscription, and this will open the page in a separate browser window. Clicking on My Grammarly will take you to your Grammarly homepage where you can access all the documents you've created in Grammarly and you can create new ones. If you access My Grammarly in a browser, you'll also have access to apps where you can download Grammarly's additional apps such as the add-in for Word and Outlook. By installing the Grammarly browser extension, you can use Grammarly outside of the editor on websites such as Facebook, YouTube, Gmail, and Google Docs. Grammarly will automatically detect the website you are on, and when you start typing, you'll either see a little green dot, possibly a red circle with a number in it, or sometimes just the Grammarly logo. Here you can see I'm typing a message to my friend Wilson in Facebook, and you'll notice the little green Grammarly dot and Grammarly underlines some of the grammatical errors that I've made. I can simply click on each underlined word to correct it, or I can hover over the green dot and open the Grammarly pop-up window. It's a similar situation in YouTube, where if I type a comment, you'll see again the little green Grammarly dot, and I can click on it to start correcting my typos. I'll also demonstrate how to use Grammarly in Google Docs, I'll go into my Google Drive and create a new document. And here you can see as the document opens, the Grammarly icon appears in the bottom right of the screen and I can click on the icon to activate Grammarly and it will start correcting my grammar as I type. If you'd like to learn more about installing Grammarly in Word and Outlook, I have separate videos for each of those and I'll link to them in the description below. I also have a video explaining how to use Grammarly on your mobile device, so I'll leave a link to that one too. And if you're having trouble installing the Grammarly extension in your browser, I have a whole playlist of videos that will hopefully be able to provide some help. Okay, so that is how to use Grammarly on Windows. I hope you found this video useful. For more tips and videos on Grammarly and other popular apps, you can subscribe to my channel and check out my blog faculty of apps .com. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.